In the second part of chapter six, we would like to discuss Gibbs property relations, which are a group of equations which are derived from the first law and the second law, and that they will be used for the estimation of uh, entropy change for solid, liquid, and the ideal gas. They will also be used for the estimation of property changes, work, heat transfer for polytropic process. And uh, let's look at uh, how Gibbs relations are generated. In chapter three, we discussed the first law for closed systems. In the last chapter, we introduce entropy. The definition of entropy is ds equal to dq divided by t for reversible process. If um, the process is reversible, dw equal to pdv, and if we replace the dq dw in the first law by these two expressions, then we get the Gibbs relation. And the second form of the Gibbs relation start with the definition of enthalpy. If we replace the du by the definition of enthalpy, the du in the enthalpy expression, we get this second expression. If uh, we group them together and uh, put in the red box, it's shown here. Notice both of uh, equations, we have ds on the left hand side. So they will be the starting point for the estimation of entropy changes. And uh, before we leave this slide, I would like to remind you one more thing. That is, the, these groups of equation were derived based on reversibility. However, since entropy is a state function, which is independent of pass, so this group of equation can be used for the estimation of entropy change, even for irreversible process. So this is a very important point I discussed here. Okay, then let's see how this group of equations can be used to estimate the uh, entropy change for solid and the liquid. If we divide the first equation we just saw by t, we get this portion of the equation. And if we look at the uh, second equation carefully, second term carefully, dv is a change in specific volume. This is a change which hardly being affected by pressure. Uh, therefore, we can assume for most process change for solid and the liquid, this term can be eliminated. And the first term, du, can be written as C dt. C is specific heat then we can write the integral form of this expression in this way. Furthermore, if C can be treated as a constant within the certain 
the specific temperature range, we can write that the integral in a simplified algebra expression. Let's take a look uh, at the example. If we heat water from 20 to 90 degrees C, the change in entropy, if we use this expression, um, we get a number. And then if we look at the steam table, the change in entropy is this number. They are in fact very close to each other, which demonstrate our assumption of eliminating this second term in the Gibbs relation is highly useful for solid and the liquid. Then let's talk about idea gas uh, property change. If we start from the same Gibbs relation, uh, again, express du as CV dt and uh, replace P by the idea gas law, uh, we get this uh, differential form for the entropy change. If we integrate, we can write this equation, the Gibbs relation in this form for idea gas. And if we use the same second expression, um, dH becomes a product Cp times dt, replace, replacing V by ideal gas law, we get this expression. And the integral form of this expression becomes this integral. This integral minus R times log P2 over P1. These two equations are very, very useful um, for ideal gas. And um, the difference for uh, these two equations is the second equation, if we know the temperature and the pressure change, we use this equation. If instead we are given temperature and the volume, we use this equation. And then uh, in the following two slides, we are going to discuss further how to estimate the two, two integral form of uh, the uh, entropy change, uh, how to use them. The first method is the easiest. We assume Cp is independent of temperature. So we get the first equation. Uh, the second equation, we assume Cv is independent of temperature. So we get this equation. Both are in algebra form, very easy to use. But uh, the error could be large if the temperature range is large. Um, the second method, is based on the assumption that Cp can be expressed as a polynomial function of temperature. And that the coefficients of these polynomials are tabulated in table 8.6. So we can integrate polynomial to get uh, this integral. We still can integrate the polynomial. Um, so this is the second approach. And the CV for the second integral, we can use CP now minus RT, plug in this whole thing in the this integral, we can estimate uh, entropy change based on this expression too. The third method is a little more involved. 
The third method involves the definition of so-called standard entropy. Standard entropy is the entropy value at a given temperature at reference pressure. Notice it's a function of temperature only because pressure is stipulated. Therefore, it is also designated by this notation, entropy with a superscript that means it's a reference pressure. Subscript designate that this entropy is a function of temperature. Therefore, at the arbitrary temperature, we can say that um, the standard entropy at the arbitrary temperature is a sum of two terms. One is from um, the standard entropy at a given reference temperature. Then we can change the temperature effect by integrating Cp over T. So this is like an integration constant and then we integrate further from T naught to T. And this number is, uh, this number is usually tabulated for several important gases like air, nitrogen, we are gonna see examples. And uh, then ge to generalize the definition of uh, standard entropy for any change in entropy of ideal gas from one state to another. Arbitrary temperature T1, P1 to T2, P2. It can be written as this form. It involves two parts. We already know this is the pressure effect in Gibbs relation. This is discussed earlier. For temperature change, we just dig out the standard entropy at two different temperature from the table. So we can get the entropy change. Um, bef um, then we can define the standard absolute entropy. Ent uh, the absolute entropy at any given temperature pressure is the sum of the pressure effect and the temperature effect from reference pressure to the pressure we are interested in getting entropy and uh, this is the entropy at a given temperature at the reference pressure so with those uh, in mind uh, we can do uh, quite a few problems. Uh, in the first example, it allows how we're going to apply the three methods discussed in the last two slides to this problem. If um, we have oxygen change from one temperature and pressure to another temperature and pressure. This is the very fundamental exercise. Um, if we use the first approach, that means if um, we assume Cp, um, no, in the first approach, we're going to use standard entropy table. Uh, entropy change from state one to state two is a combination of two group of terms. This group term take care of the pressure change, 
this group of terms involve the temperature change from one temperature to another at a reference pressure. And these two numbers can be dig out from A.2. So after we dig out this num uh, these two numbers, we can plug in this equation. Um, the second approach, we can assume CP is a polynomial. So we can put it a polynomial form of the equation and integrate um, the coefficient of polynomial can be found from table 8.6. So uh, it's probably time for you, uh, you to familiarize what we have in the appendices. Uh, the third approach is the easiest. We assume CP is a constant. So we get three numbers. Uh, you can tell the tabulated value give reasonably close approach within 1%. And using the assumption constant CP, the method will involve some error. The second example we're going to look at involves the estimation of uh, heating, uh, heating air, heating air from um, 300 C to 300 K to 600 K, and the pressure drop from 400 to 300 kilopascal, based on two approaches. The first approach. We assume the specific heat is a constant. Second approach, we assume the specific heat is not a constant. The first approach, like last example, we can dig out this from the appendix and we can use the algebra form of uh, entropy change. We can get at this number. In the second approach, variable specific heat, uh, the most accurate one, we use standard heat, standard entropy table. We can dig out these two numbers and put it in this equation while we take care of the pressure change as a second term. Uh, in my opinion, this number will be better than this approach. Then uh, we can look at uh, um, uh, asentropic process for ideal gas. This is a special family of process. As you remember, the definition of an isentropic process is that uh, entropy remains constant. It is also defined based on two properties, reversible and the idea, adiabatic. If we have isentropic process, Entropy doesn't change. So the Gibbs relation we talk about can be significantly simplified. And uh, if we use the two Gibbs relation, sorry, uh, if we use the two Gibbs relations we have generated, one involve P T and P, the other one about T and the V, combine them, we get a relation between P and the T. And the second relation is a relation between T and the V. 
these are very simple algebraic expressions. Um, and uh, here in this expression, K is uh, defined as CP over CV. And combine the two relation we just derived for the isentropic process, we get these two expressions. We can use one of them at different times. If we want to solve P2, we use this expression. If we want to use to solve T2, is this equation will be easier. Um, but remember, these two expressions are derived based on constant specific heat. So the integral can be represented in algebra form. And uh, the second half of this slide, we discuss that for an isentropic process, we have this uh, relation um, P V to the case power equal to the equal to a constant. This relation can be derived from, from this the first expression at the top. But then if we compare this equation to what we saw before for polytropic process we notice their similarities and the more specifically before but because k is defined as um, cp over cv so this is a fixed number on the other hand for a polytropic process n is sufficiently general it can be any positive numbers or even negative numbers. Therefore, important conclusion is isentropic process is a special case of polytropic process with n equal to k, k equal to 1.4 for ideal gas. Keep this in mind, then we can tell from this figure, this is a set of figure we have seen earlier. <coughs> Different uh, polytropic process on the PV diagram and the TS diagram. You can tell for an isentropic process is a special line on this diagram, on this diagram because entropy is a constant, isentropic process is a constant. And um, so this is something could be useful later on for us. Now let's look at two examples. The first one involves gas uh, expansion from high pressure to low pressure, where the volume expands. And uh, we're going to look at uh, this process from two different aspects. If uh, the initial state of air is given, temperature and pressure are given, the final pressure is given, we are asked if the process is isentropic, reversible, and adiabatic. We are asked to estimate T2, the work involved during the expansion. And uh, uh, the expansion ratio, V2 over V1. <clears throat> At the outset, if uh, it's an isentropic process, it's an idiopathic. So can we say 
T2 will increase or decrease? From the first law, we can say that the gas will do some work. So at some expense of the internal energy, we gain this work. So the temperature will decrease after the expansion. Okay, let's look at how we analyze this process. We already know it's adiabatic, so Q is zero. Um, from now on, it's a standard exercise. When we tackle a problem, we always start with the first law and the second law. Uh, see how they can help us. If we look at the first law, we see it become du equal to dw. Second law become ds equal to zero. And uh, state one is fully stipulated. P2 is given. But from the second law, we know entropy doesn't change. So the entropy at the state two is known. We can estimate based on the state one entropy. Therefore, we can already uh, have the impression T2 is fully determined. Therefore, T2 can be found in some way as soon as S2 is found. Therefore, um, we uh, know from A5 we can find the CV value. And then we use this expression we discussed uh, just a few slides ago, the PV TP relation for asyntropic process can be written in a very simplified form, algebra expression. So we can estimate the T2 based on this expression. Um, then we can use the tabulated internal energy, put this value in the first law, we get a W term. And then we can estimate the expansion ratio based on PV relation, also discussed a couple slides ago. Uh, so this example illustrates for isentropic process, we can use the algebra relation we derived uh, very easily. And uh, then uh, we can use the second approach. The second approach says for isentropic process, entropy change equal to zero. So we can say based on the definition, definition of um, standard entropy. Then we put the, the, the relation for standard entropy. We can simplify this relation to this form. And then we can solve this expression for P. We get this relation. And if we solve for uh, standard entropy for state two, we get the second expression. And we can say the second expression can be used to solve T2 because the standard entropy is tabulated as a function of T uh, in appendix. Therefore, as soon as we can find standard entropy, we can find T2. 
um, if we combine what we just discussed for the uh, isentropic process, if we want to estimate the temperature pressure specific volume change, combine what we just discussed into one expression. This is the expression. So this will be highly useful too. Uh, so let's look at the same example, air expansion case um, from one condition to another. We can tell the analysis is basically the same until um, here in the middle of the analysis, we can find the internal energy and the standard entropy from the table tables. Uh, make sure you can find these numbers at a given temperature. Once temperature is given, standard entropy is given. Then in order to find um, T2, we have to go to the same table for standard entropy and uh, do the interpolation at two different temperature. We can get this. Um, we can also get internal energy by using the same table through the interpolation. And then we can estimate the work and uh, the expansion ratio. Finally, you may wonder, we are talking about the expansion process. Can we estimate the work based on the integral of PDV? The answer is yes. And uh, we integrate for you for actually for a a group of process, polytropic. You remember we mentioned uh, isentropic process is only a special case for polytropic process. So for polytropic process, we can integrate PDV to get W term if n not equal to one. If n equal to one, we get a simple relation. Um, so for an isentropic process, k equal to 1.4. So we can use this expression for the estimation of pressure. I will leave to you to demonstrate that uh, the work turn estimate from this example is uh, equivalent to this. Now let's look at another example. This example deal with uh, compression of nitrogen. Nitrogen is compressed from one temperature and the pressure to a higher pressure in a closed system. Uh, but the process is a reversible polytropic process, not necessarily isentropic. So the n value is 1.3. We are asked to estimate the work involved in the heat transfer. So based on what uh, we discussed, uh, we can list the first law like this. We uh, specify the path, which is a polytropic process with n equal to 1.3. We know state one fully for state two. Uh, we know only P2. Uh, so let's see how we find uh, the required information if we are asked to find specific 
work and uh, heat transfer. The key is we can find T2 based on the polytropic process we discussed earlier. Remember, this is a hidden piece of uh, uh, information we would like to find. Once T2 is found, we know the state too fully. And uh, you may wonder how this equation can be generated. I urge you to do the process to, to derive this equation by yourself. Um, the, this expression can be easily generated based on the definition of polytropic process and the ideal gas law. Uh, very similar to isentropic process. Um, so once we derive the temperature, we can use the equation we discussed on the last slide. The work term can be estimated. Then in the first law, uh, the only piece missing information is Q because U1, U2 can be found from the property table. After the state one, state two are fully given, these two terms can be fully determined. Alternatively, we can estimate the internal energy change based on constant uh, specific heat. So and in this example, we use constant specific heat example. And uh, uh, the second method I discuss is uh, basically the same as what uh, we discussed on the last slide, except we use table the value for U1 and the U2 um, for the estimation of Q. Uh, notice um, the difference is not really very big. Um, uh, this concludes this part of uh, my lecture.